Brandon, Jamie, and Kevin. They can take your possessions from you. They can take your money, your car, your clothes, but your education, you take that with you wherever you go. We were charged with interviewing a subject from the ESL, GED, and ABE department. And uh, I kind of walked in there with the stereotypical idea of what I was going to be doing. And stepping outside the box for this particular speech, we're not going to introduce you to the subject that we interviewed. We're not going to lecture you about the history. What we're going to do is we're going to stand up here and we're going to introduce you to the friend that we made. I have never in my life been so happy to have the wrong idea about somebody. The one interview that I was able to sit down and, and ask Lily any questions about her life, she blew me away. Jamie's going to start off, or excuse me, Kevin is going to start off by giving you her history and how she got here to America and where she came from. And then Jamie is going to discuss her life as a mother and probably the most important event that ever happened in her life that really kind of defined who she is today. And then I'm going to talk about her schooling why she's here, what she wants to do with her education, and what she wants to do with the rest of her life. I'm gonna take this opportunity to <clears throat> hand the floor over to Kevin so that he can introduce you to Lily, our friend. Good morning. I'm gonna talk about Lily a little bit. Um, not a whole lot. I'm gonna spend most of my time talking about Puerto Rico, which is where she's from. Mm. She actually came here when, from Puerto Rico when she was about 10 years old um, after her father passed away. So they moved to, actually ended up in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, they were there quite a while and her mom actually ended up being in a pretty nasty car wreck. Uh, life threatening injuries and that kind of stuff. Her two brothers and her three sisters uh, had to be split up amongst relatives, which, you know, sometimes that's the way life is. <coughs> she, uh, it's kind of funny because when we were uh, interviewing her, the same day we interviewed her, she actually got a job here at Tacoma, mm -hmm. which was kind of nice. She's actually an office assist, office administrator here in town. She also, uh, her only real sporting thing that she likes to do is run. And she actually plans on running her first ever marathon this summer. So we're going to go back to back to Puerto Rico now, and uh, it's actually nicknamed the Isle of Enchantment, and Puerto Rico actually stands for Rich Port. The the island is actually. A series of islands. I think there's, I don't know, seven or eight of them. But Puerto Rico, the main island, is comprised of about 5,320 square miles. <coughs> it's 110 miles long and 40 miles wide. Pretty mountainous, if you could call a 4,000 foot mountain a, a mountain. <laughs> to us here, that's kind of a hill, you know. I think there was something like 1,900 square miles of water there. And the funny thing is, it's got 17 lakes, but they're all man-made. It doesn't have any natural lakes. 
Part of the reason Lily and her family came here was <coughs> because of the fact that the economy there is kind of poor. Most people in that country only make about $18,000 a year, even today, which is kind of surprising. When you look at some of these pictures, they're on, on the screen here, and look at some of the high rises and stuff, you would really think there are, most people would make more money there, especially being that the pharmaceuticals are one of the uh, major exports from there. And uh, photochemicals, not photochemicals, petrochemicals, excuse me, is one of their main industries. Uh, and tourism, obviously, because you got the big port there. Uh, all the cruise ships go there. You see some of the pictures in there. That's their flag, too, by the way. Uh, some of the pictures you'll see up there, they'll show the port with all the cruise ships in there, and there's, you know, six, eight at a time in there. It's just pretty surprising. I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise ship, but there's four to 5,000 people on each ship. So, you you know, they're dumping a lot of people in that, in that town or in San Juan at one time. San Juan is the capital, and it's also the largest city, and it's also the largest port there. <coughs> the whole Puerto Rico in itself has approximately about 4 million people in there. Close. Um, the interesting thing I found, though, about the people that are there, there's actually more Puerto Ricans in the United States than there is in Puerto Rico. A lot of them started migrating here about in 1950. There was a big, big push because of the economy down there. You know, back then it was mainly farming and that kind of stuff. Most of my uh, information come out of the World Facts book, uh, U.S. Department of Labor Statistics, and the U.S. Census Bureau. And I kind of like to pass this off to Jamie now because she's going to tell us a really good story about the right now. My miracle baby. That's what Lily calls her daughter. When Lily was three months pregnant with her daughter Priscilla, her only child, she went to her ultrasound appointment. There she was diagnosed with, well, sorry, the baby was diagnosed with gastroschisis. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. It's a birth defect where the infant has its major organs on the outside of its body. In most cases, the infant will only have one organ, a heart or a lung or a kidney. Lily's baby had all of the organs outside. <coughs> Excuse me. From there on, she was put on a high-risk pregnancy. The chances of survival for a baby like that is one in a thousand. They normally don't make it to full term. And in Lily's case, all of the organs were outside of her baby. So she really didn't know what this pregnancy was going to be like. But she carried the baby, she prayed, she took good care of herself, she was on bed rest. On her due date, the day she delivered, they took the baby by cesarean. They rushed it into an emergency surgery and she didn't, she didn't know. She laid there alone wondering if, you know, her baby was going to make it. When the doctors returned, they brought the baby with her. Surgery was a success. The baby was healthy. Most children that have this birth defect have ongoing health problems. Her little girl is healthy and 10 years old today. No problems. Priscilla, she's 10 years old, she's in fourth grade. She understands at her age what a blessing it is to be here today, that 
She's healthy and happy. She lives life to the fullest. Her and Lily are very close. They do everything together. When Lily talked to us about her daughter, she just glowed. Priscilla is an amazing little girl. She goes to private school. She has the highest reading scores in her school. She speaks three languages, <coughs> French, Spanish, and is learning Italian. Lily has taught her the Spanish, but Italian and French she's learned on her own. Ten years old. Together, they go to museums, they go to the libraries, and they watch the History Channel together. Everywhere Priscilla goes, she has a book with her. Lily thinks the reason that Priscilla reads so well and loves to read is because when she was pregnant with her, she read to her belly. So she says that's why her daughter loves to read so much. Anyways, interviewing Lily, it was a pleasure. And hearing her talk about her and her daughter's relationship, it was really nice. I could relate. My daughter was there for the interview, so I think that kind of helped Lily open up. We don't really know if Lily is married or what that status is, but it's her and Priscilla living alone. They split the housework between each other. Priscilla makes her own breakfast every morning, whether it's pancakes or omelets, she makes her own breakfast and makes breakfast for Lily, cleans up, does her own laundry. They, they do everything together. <coughs> um, I think that Priscilla is a really remarkable child. I thought that my kids were smart and wonderful, but hearing about this little girl and the way she talks and the things that she does, it's really amazing. I'm going to give the floor to Brandon. Thank you. I asked Lily what the biggest issue was when she got here at 12 years old. And obviously she said the, the language barrier. That was the, the biggest thing that she had to overcome here in America, but she did it. She went to high school in Arizona where she graduated. Excuse me. She also has a certificate already for a, an administrative assistant. And as Kevin mentioned, she just got a new job as an assistant or as an administrative assistant. She's coming here to Clover Park because she wants to transfer from Clover Park to a university and get her bachelor's degree in computer engineering. Once she gets that, she wants a job that allows her to travel all over the world. She wants to go to Italy. She wants to take her daughter to Italy as well. It's part of the reason that her daughter's learning Italian. Lily says she gets good grades, especially in math. And I asked her why. And Lily said it's because she has her daughter help her with her homework. <laughs> and she did kind of laugh about that too. But apparently, as you got from Jamie, Lily's daughter is a very big part of, of Lily's life. And when we were interviewing her, it was similar to Leah and similar to Sean. It was almost like pulling teeth. But once we asked her about her family, oh, that's all she wanted to talk about. She, the other stuff was just cursory. She was doing it to be nice, but the, the talking about her daughter was really where it was at. The quote that is sitting in front of you that I printed out, that was something that I scribbled down in the conversation with Lily, because that was actually something that she said. That's her quote. And when I heard it, and it took a second for it to to sink in that this was something I wanted to capture. So I wrote it down and I reread it, read it again, read it again, and I thought that is one of the best ways to describe who Lily is as a person. She's very driven. She knows what hard work is. She teaches it to her daughter, responsibility. She even gets into conflicts with her family over raising children and in the end, Lily says, yeah, at 10 years old, my daughter can speak English, can speak Spanish, can speak French, and is teaching herself Italian. 
at you know 14 years old your daughter really can't do anything and she uses that kind of as a motivation because she's apparently considered to be a hard-nosed parent even though really she's not she's just teaching responsibility something that we all need and we all should have taught to us at a young age Kevin discussed Puerto Rico where Lily came from and the reason he did that is because Lily still goes back to Puerto Rico that's still her home that's still where her heart is she loves America but she's Puerto Rican through and through Jamie discussed with you her daughter and one of the most important events that ever happened in Lily's life because it was such an important event and I discussed a little bit with you about her education, her dreams, what she wants to do, and generally what kind of a person she is. Thank you.